Hi guys, welcome back. So as I promised you, I said we are going to apply what we've looked at in our first segment in terms of the properties of parallelograms, right? The properties of parallel lines and the properties of congruency as well. So now we're going to try and put this into action by solving one question or two just to see exactly what we are talking about. So let's just go straight to the first question that we need to do. So here they're saying to us, in triangle FGH, right, this is a triangle FGH, J is the midpoint of FH, right? J being the midpoint of FH makes FJ to be equals to JH, right? Now that's one interesting thing because you can see we might be talking about diagonals somewhere there. And then they say to us, J, uh, G, J, produced intersects the line through H, right? So that's just to tell us it is a straight line and this is parallel to GF in I, right? This would be parallel to GF, which is this line there and that line there, right? Now, based on that, I can now add a few things, right? Remember when I said the implicit facts that you need to know. Since these are parallel, I know I can claim that this line, this angle there, is equal to this angle there because it's alternate angles, right? I can also say that this angle here is equal to that angle there, which is also alternate angles. Let me, it's actually H2, not H1, right? And that will still be, the reason will be alternate angles, right? So you can talk about those. And then this one here, I know that this will be equal to that one because it's vertically opposite angles. So, so far you can see, I have now a lot of other things, three more things that I added based on the fact that I know the lines are parallel to one another. What they want us to prove is to prove that FGHI is a parallelogram. So the whole shape is actually a parallelogram. So how do we go about doing that? Firstly, we read through the information and indicate all the equalities as I showed you. And this is how the diagram will look like. And I promise you, if you don't start here, then you won't have a proper plan of action in terms of how to prove this concept of parallelogram. Now, you're going to choose a possible method to prove that this quadrilateral is a parallelogram, and I'm going to give you a few options that you are going to try and choose from based on what you are given, right? Now, my options are, I can prove that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, remember that, right? So not just one pair. So I must prove that this side is parallel to that side and this side on the left is parallel to the side on the right. Then I can claim this is a parallelogram. I can prove that the sides, both pairs of opposite sides are equal. So the side at the, at the top and bottom are equal on the left and on the right are also equal. If I can do that, then I will say this is a parallelogram. Or I can prove that the opposite angles are equal, both pairs. So meaning the one by the to, uh, top left corner and bottom right corner there, and the one by the top right corner and bottom left corner there. You can then try and prove those to be equal. If they are, then this is a parallelogram. Now, the one that we saw that might be the way that we're going to take is to prove that the diagonals bisect each other. Why am I saying that? Because already we were told that one line is bisected, right? Now, if I can prove that this other line is also bisected, then I can say the diagonals of this quadrilateral bisect each other. And then the last thing that you can try and prove is just to use one pair of sides to prove both equality and to be parallel to one another. Now, please consider trying to prove the triangles that are co to be congruent to one another. And remember, the congruence that you are proving, it is not necessarily just to talk about congruence. No, this is because we're trying to prove equal sides from congruence 
all we proving equal angles from that congruence, right? Because remember, if two shapes are congruent to one another, it means all the corresponding sides and angles will be equal to each other. Now, let's try and do this together and see exactly how we can prove that this is a parallelogram. So firstly, what do I know? I know that I am going to specifically limit my focus to a specific triangle. So I will say in triangle, all right, so I will start by firstly telling you which triangle I'm focusing on, which is F, J, G, and in triangle, I, J, H, right? So I'm going to look at what the, these, if these two triangles are congruent to one another. If I can, I promise you, then I can claim that G, J is equal to J, I because of congruence. So let's try and do that just now. So in F, G, uh, J, I know that F1, is equals to H2, right? And this is going to be because there's alternate angles. And you need to specifically tell me which lines are parallel, right? Which is FG parallel to IH. Also, I will then try and say um, the other angle that I have will be G1 is equals to the other orange one, which is I2, right? This is I2, and my resin will be the same as what I have, right? Alternate angles, and this is because FG is parallel to IH, IH, right? So this is IH, not IF, IH. And then from there, I can use one more side that I can find because I can't use three angles. Remember, three angles is not congruency, it's similarity. So I will use this given side of mine to say those sides are equal. So this will be FJ is equal to JH, and this will be because I was given that that is the case. Then I can claim that triangle F, G, J is congruent to triangle. So now the angle at F is corresponding with angle at H. The angle at G is corresponding with the angle at I. Then it means the angle at J will correspond with the angle at J. So because of this, I can then say that my G, J is equal to J, I promise you, saying this GJ is really a very funny thing to say because now it's like two letters that kind of they have the same sound. Anyway, so this, my reason will be from congruency. And then lastly, I will then say, therefore, triangle, and not triangle, quadrilateral, I mean, because now we're no longer focusing on the triangle. Quadrilateral F, I, H, G is a palm, right? Palm means it's short for parallelogram, by the way. And then my reason for this will be uh, diagonals bisect. Diagonals bisect each other. Bisect. And that's how I can then use congruency to my advantage. But now let's see if I did not know how to do this, right? If I did not use the concept of diagonals, what else can I do? Remember one of the options I had for you was we can talk about one side, one pair of sides to be parallel and equal, right? So already I am given that they are parallel. So if I can prove that FG is equal to IH, then I would have proven that this is a quadrilateral. So the same thing as what I've done with the previous example, right? You will prove congruency. So you will find that triangle F, G, J is congruent to triangle 
the F corresponds with H, remember that, and this corresponds with I, and that one with J, right? And your reason is still the same, angle, angle, side, because I will still use the same process as the previous example. And then from there, I can then say FG is equal to I, H. And my reason still will also be from congruency, right? You don't write congruency in full, just the three horizontal lines. And then as a result, I will then say that my F, G, H, I, right, is a palm. Now the order in terms of how you go with in terms of your labeling does not really matter as long as you start at one point and go with the points and not jump any point. And my reason for this will be one pair, one pair of opposite sides are parallel and equal to each other. Because of this, I will then have claimed that this is a parallelogram. Not by measuring anything, guys, because I know you are very creative. You'll start using a ruler to measure the sides. No, we're going to use the main concept of congruence to try and talk about equality in these two shapes. And that's how you can then prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram without mentioning the word parallelogram in your proof, only as the final statement, because that's what we want you to do. All right, guys, that's all I have for now. I want us to take a quick ad break so that when we come back a bit refreshed, we can then look at some more problems together. Please stay tuned. I'll be back just now. Mm -hmm.